Have you ever avoided taking something apart because you weren't sure you had the capabilities and or the know-how to put it back together again? Well, ladies and gents, that was me. I bought a Kenny Bell supercharger that ended up having a couple of issues with it, which ultimately took me down the road of completely dismantling the supercharger, not having any manufacturer support and or never ever taking a supercharger apart in my whole entire life. However, I did. And let me tell you, it was stressful. Today, I am going to show you how I put that back together. Now, if you missed my first video, I'm gonna link it for you right here. That's the full-blown dismantulation of this Kenny Bell 2.1 liter Flowzilla supercharger. Today, we're gonna be putting her back together. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Some bitch. All right, so quick explanation as to what's going on here. We are currently heating the rotor and just doing it with boiling water. Sitting at like 118, 117, 118 degrees. And then we're hitting or spraying the bearing with a little freeze off, kind of a penetrating slush chilling effect and that's bringing our bearing temp down cooler than the rest of the rotor and ultimately allowing us to bump it out with our bearing puller this blind bearing puller and the slide hammer so it seems to be working pretty good uh we had a heck of a time initially trying to get these to work and actually come to find out it was due to the fact that the whole kit was brand new and a little tight to get squeezed together and through the bearing because there's two different sized bearings in here. So bigger one that we're currently in right now and then in behind that's a smaller diameter inside hole. So it takes two different uh, puller tools to get these guys out. Um, and how we initially got this into the first one is we actually squashed it down in the vise so I took it, squashed it down, and actually wrapped a zip tie around it to hold it tight and then dropped it in there and uh, we were off to the races. So we're going to get these bearings bumped out of here and then uh, we're officially in the rebuild stages. All right, here's a quick look at everything fully disassembled and cleaned up and ready for reassembly. So to give you an idea of what we were dealing with on the inside of those rotors, each one of these kind of packs was piled into the rotor here. So you got this tension spring deal. And it's got a little aluminum deal on the bottom of it. Two bearings. And then this kind of keeper, aluminum keeper. And a snap ring on the bottom side. So that whole operation works itself into these rotors. And then ultimately... This guy here, bolts on there, and what seems to hold pressure on the rotor and ultimately keep it just ever so slightly off the case. Now, million dollar question here is, how tight do you torque this down to in order to give it the right amount of clearance, the rotor, the right amount of clearance off the backside of that case? So. Got to go hunting for this information. Um, got an email into John Bond right now, hoping they can help me out. But outside of that, 
Um, everything's in good shape. All the new bearings are in the freezer. We're going to freeze those overnight and then uh, ultimately go back to our heating operation, heat the rotors, throw the new bearings in, right? Heat this case, throw the new seals and bearings in it, and then it's reassembly time. Okay, folks, quick verbal update for you because I haven't given you too many of those and you're probably wondering what the hell is going on, but my apologies. I'm trying to maintain focus here, right? There's a lot of moving parts to this that need to go back in the correct orientation and tight tolerances, aluminum versus steel. There's a lot going on here. So anyway, the bearings are back in the rotor and that uh, valve spring looking deal, that's all down in there. You can even see the bolt hanging out in there. It... Uh, Kind of hangs out in place and then ultimately gets thrown onto this back plate, right? So that's where your bolt threads into. So yeah, both rotors are now done, right? They can be dropped on that plate and that's the next step I'm going to go to. The front plate has also been bearinged and sealed, okay? Uh, you can see the seals in there. It's kind of interesting. They uh, They actually go in there the opposite of what your head tells you they should go in there because oil lives on this side of the case, not this side. This is the air side, this is the oil side. So this bolts to here, okay? Um, and I'll try and do like a, a full blown recap once this is all together and maybe like overlay some video so this all makes more sense. But anyway, um, we're moving along. Uh, these guys, they go on the front of the snouts. You probably see that happen in a 
an upcoming time lapse or something to that effect. So once these are mounted on the back plate, we can start fitting everything back into the compressor casing and then get back to the fun part of timing these rotors and getting the right amount of clearance between these rotors, which is all done at the front end off of those gears. That's interesting. I don't know if I mentioned this before or not, but what you use is a high quality 20 pound piece of paper, which is actually in and around three thousandths of an inch, which is the tolerance that these need to operate at. I miked this paper and it's right between like three and three and a half thou. So that's about the best I can find. I went to like a print shop to get this stuff. The printer paper I had at home was like four and a half thou. I've never measured paper before. This is completely ridiculous. But anyway, this is the, the, uh, the way that I've been told to do this. So this is what we're doing. Anyway, folks, stand by. We're gonna keep pushing forward. You don't need no stinking fur. <laughs> folks today's the day the rotors are getting married to the case all the flanges are getting screwed and glued we're putting this thing back together so the little five mil allen bolt that ultimately holds each one of these rotors it's way down in in the rotor here those have been loctited and torqued to 10 foot pounds now we're going to start again gluing this thing together we're going to be using a high temp anaerobic sealer for all of these flanges. So here to here and here to there and all that good stuff. Uh, the other thing that I'm still a little unsure of, but uh, I think I'm, I'm leaning towards is we're gonna use a high temp, high performance RTV to ultimately seal the inlet and outlet. Pardon me, this is the outlet, this is the inlet. So I've got them sitting over here on the bench we're going to be putting those on today as well, because I ultimately, if you've caught some of my other videos, still need to manufacture and engineer this bypass valve, because the one that my buddy built me is just not going to work. So we got to get those on the compressor as well. And that is all kind of part and parcel with having this thing all kind of glued and sealed all at the same time. It's not really something you can piece together one bit at a time because obviously you want this anaerobic sealer to seal up and there's like there's this flange so here to the back plate and then there's the back plate to this and then there's this to the inlet like it just one thing after another and all of which gets held together with five bolts so pardon me six bolts so anyway it's a process that at least with my logic needs to go together all at the exact same time. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Stand by. Wedding is happening.
slow there, buddy. In there like swimwear. Like this. That's this is the outlet here. And these two go to the emergency outlet. This doesn't do anything. This just cleans the surface. So like for the prep. Because it dries so it makes it so it's so it'll steal. Right. So when you do your bedazzle stuff. <laughs> With the girls at home, it's true. This guy was actually rotating the whole assembly too when we got this one tightened down. Yeah, I know. But it's like we gotta go. I just did this to tighten it, not that way. So I wanna go. There we go, okay. See, look down here now. Look down there. Right. See, watch this. Watch that. Wait. See how it's gone? Yep. Oh. Yeah. So, no, do this. Okay, gear and arbor on. Work through the pins. Yeah. Well, I'm about to put lock tail on this. So, hey? Yeah, you want me to lean on that? Which is that picture you get when you're blocking it all. <laughs> okay, so that's done. No. See, the trouble is we should have had this gear. Okay, you gotta take that back off. Let me start off. I'm gonna take this off and you gotta line up the gears now. That's the sound we want. Is it hold that? No. Just fucking don't whack the pork out here, eh? No. Good and tight, as the Germans say. Good and bar. Making sure you know what your kids are fucking like. Is out. Okay. Just to set that on. Do a little fucking rotate. Just run there. I don't know why this black one. Oh! What? Thread sealer. This one goes into the case.
Okay, which way? Put that down. The right way. <laughs> Go down. All because of this one bottom hole thread. Last time we're gonna see these rotors. Thank God. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> how the fuck is this gonna? It goes it under, it's gotta go lower. Does it? Yeah, it hooks underneath this side of the okay, intake. Wait a yeah, like that. Well, ladies and gents, thanks so much for joining me on this absolute whirlwind marathon saga that I've called the Kenny Bell Rebuild. Now, again, I've said this before, it's worth saying again, if you're not comfortable, say, rebuilding a rear diff, I probably wouldn't recommend going down this road, okay? Tight tolerances, you really need to be paying attention, things can get messed up quite easily, so I don't know do it at your own risk okay but alternatively there are the professionals john bond performance i mentioned them in my last video they're worth mentioning again I actually just did a podcast with nick from john bond that's going to be coming out in the coming weeks so you can hear a little bit more about the uh, background story to the john bond performance company so thanks for joining us on this one folks we really appreciate you and uh, we'll catch you on the next one take care bye for now